yeah, I mean, there's a big, um, a big fight going on, basically between the Supreme Court of Brazil and a particular justice in the Supreme Court of, uh, of Brazil, Justice Morales, and, um, uh, and uh, Judge Alexandre de Morales, who is a, uh, and uh, Elon Musk, and, uh, and, and basically Twitter. Morales is, um, is a, again, a judge in the Supreme Court of, of, um, of Brazil. The Supreme Court in Brazil has much more, it's, it, you know, if you think about the American Supreme Court, it's, it's quite passive, right? Stuff comes to it, and it makes decisions, and, and the process is slow. They take all arguments. And in Brazil, I think following more of a, maybe of a French tradition, I'm not sure how it's done in Spain, maybe it's also Spanish tradition, a French tradition where, where judges are activists. Judges are investigative judges. They, they actually go and they actually search out facts, and they, and they can, they, they can uh, you know, uh, pass a judgment and, and in a sense be almost like a, an executive uh, a branch of government. So there's not a clear differentiation between the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive as there is in the American system, which I think is the, the right kind of system, uh, in, uh, in Brazil and I think in some, uh, also some uh, European countries. There's less of that, those kind of distinctions. Anyway, this is a very activist judge who goes out there to seek what he considers justice. Um, and uh, uh, this judge was uh, primarily concerned about the attempts, according to him and according to many within Brazil, of, uh, of overturning the last election in Brazil. That is, um, it, the last election in Brazil, Bolsonaro lost and Lula won, uh, somewhat paralleling, I guess, Trump losing and Biden winning in, uh, in 2020. And uh, just similar to what happened January 6th, there were riots in, uh, in Brazil and there was a, a, you know, some, uh, uh, some uh, claim and attempted insurrection. At least that's the claim. Uh, Morales was um, uh, very active in uh, trying to secure what he considered securing democracy. So, for example, on election, uh, supposedly on election day, uh, highway police began holding up buses full of voters so they wouldn't have an opportunity to vote. Morales stepped in and, and, uh, and told them to stop and allowed the voting to continue uh, when they were, uh, when kind of the right wing made all these claims about an illegitimate election. The election was stolen, just like they did in the United States. Uh, the difference is that in, um, in uh, Brazil, he ordered the, the people arguing that the election was stolen, he ordered them banned from social media. He has that kind of power in Brazil. Uh, and then when, you know, thousands of protests to storm Brazil's halls of power in Brasilia, uh, he basically uh, arrested uh, many of the people uh, who were involved or were involved in allowing uh, the demonstrations to succeed and, and uh, and to go unchecked, he, you know, he has kind of uh, identified himself as the savior of democracy, you know, and, and I think many people on the left consider him a hero. Interestingly, this Morales, when he was appointed to the Supreme Court in 2017, he was opposed by the left because at the time he was considered a right of center uh, candidate, a right of center judge. But he has definitely taken a kind of a fascist approach uh, uh, to what he is doing. He has uh, jailed people without a trial for posting what he considers threats on social media, but notice without a trial. He's helped sentence a sitting congressman to nearly nine years in prison for supposedly threatening the court. He's ordered raids on businesses and businessmen with really very little evidence that they have done anything wrong. He suspended an elected governor from his job, and he's unilaterally blocked dozens of accounts and thousands of posts on social media with virtually you know, no transparency, no lists of who has been blocked. Um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, he has basically become a, a, a mini, uh, mini dictator uh, in, in Brazil. And, and my guess is that given, uh, given that Lula uh, Lula is the president of Brazil, is a, I don't know, how would you describe Lula? 
uh, is kind of a mafia thug. Uh, Lula is uh, is is a awful, you know, leftist. But it's more than he's just a leftist. He is uh, he is a uh, unbelievably corrupt. I remember when I was in Brazil, God, ten years ago, or what? I, I can't tell the year, but I was in Brazil. And I was, I was speaking at a conference, and when my talk ended, they turned on a big television, you know, uh, uh, behind the stage. And uh, they put on the television, and uh, on, on that big screen behind the stage, you could see Lula uh, being arrested, placed in handcuffs, put into a police car, and driven away. And I think everybody in that room, me included, thought, yeah, I mean, he's going down for corruption. That's the end of Lula. He's finished, right? And indeed, he was tried, he was convicted, he was sent to jail, and everybody assumed that Lula was, that was the end of Lula. I mean, that, that, that was it. The left would have to find somebody, somebody else. Well, the Supreme Court reversed uh, the sentencing and freed him, even though he'd been accused and, and, and sentenced on corruption charges. And then he managed to run for president, get elected, right? Uh, get elected, and uh, he is um, uh, he is a uh, uh, he is the president of, of Brazil today. And Brazil is not a trivial country. Brazil is a 250 million population. It is a, a, a massive country geographically. It is by far the biggest country and the most populous country in Latin America. Uh, it is uh, it it has immense na uh, natural resources. Uh, it, it has the potential to be an incredibly rich, successful, prosperous country. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it, it, it's not at all. And, uh, and, and a lot of that has to do with governance. And maybe one can hope that maybe the energy behind the election of Millet will spill over to places like uh, Brazil and Chile and get somebody, somebody more free market elected in these countries. But anyway, uh, so... Uh, Lula, of course, supports uh, any, everything Morales has done. Uh, Morales' primary target, or not only target, but primary target has been what is perceived to be the right. And there's a big debate going on right now in Brazil about free speech. I, I, you know, I can tell you that uh, uh, somebody who's a friend of mine, somebody who's a, a, a big advocate for Ayn Rand and, and, a, and a big advocate for liberty and freedom and, and ha has been in the past very active in Brazil and elsewhere around the world in promoting uh, freedom is, is, is kind of moving out of Brazil because he's afraid, because he is going to be, you know, they're coming after him. They're coming after anybody who stood up to Lula, anybody who might have supported Bolsonaro, anybody who argues for liberty and freedom, uh, anybody who's arguing that Lula is a corrupt thug is in trouble in Brazil. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'll give you an example. A left-wing commentator, um, well-known left-wing commentator, writes, quote, under the threat of Nazi fascist inspired insurrection, it is worth temporarily, temporarily suspending individual freedoms in the name of collective freedom. That's how you get dictatorship. And that's, I think, the direction Lula would like to go. Um, anyway, uh, uh, so... This has led the uh, Morales to, to basically ban a, uh, a number of people uh, from Twitter. Uh, so the government has basically told Twitter, you know, cut these people off. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to, uh, they can't take, take away their accounts. They can't post on, uh, they can't post on Twitter anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, the, 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 this is uh, now... Uh, uh, Morales, but also now the Supreme Court, uh, the, the Chief Justice um, uh, of the Brazilian Court, uh, 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 saying, look, uh, 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 you know, Twitter has to follow the rules. We set the rules. Twitter doesn't set the rules. And we want Twitter to silence these people, to deplatform these people. And Twitter has, under threat, threat of both massive fines and, uh, and also threat of imprisoning Twitter employees in Brazil. Anyway, the last few days, Elon Musk has punched back and basically said, no, we are going to uh, uh, re-platform. 
we're going to put back all these accounts that you've asked us to dismiss. We're not going to be your, we're not going to allow you to censor these people. Um, the Morales has come back and threatened Twitter employees. So Elon Musk's uh, latest is he says he's going to do a full data dump, uh, which means he's going to disclose everybody that's been banned, all the names, all the data, the letters that have been uh, that have been sent by uh, Judge Morales uh, to Twitter. Uh, but he's only going to do that after he has moved all his employees into a safe to a safe place where supposedly the authorities can get to them. I don't know what that will actually mean, but there's, there's a real battle here uh, over this. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, what, what he wants is, um, is, you know, he's trying to fight for, for freedom of speech in Brazil. And he's trying to say, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let this happen. He told, uh, he tweeted that he'd be lifting all restrictions uh, and that uh, the judges applied massive fines, threatened to arrest our employees. Uh, and, um, you, you know, massive fines, by the way, is $20,000 per day for each reactivated account. I don't know how, much account, how many accounts they are. But I think the bigger issue is, is, is the threat to arrest employees of Twitter. That, that is something the CEO has to take very seriously. He also tweeted... You know, and this is, I wish, I, I, you know, I wish uh, he, he fully understood this. I wish Elon Musk fully understood this. But he did tweet, quote, principles matter more than profits. Um, of course, principles ultimately lead to profits, but good for him for standing on principle. I, again, I wish he understood this more thoroughly. Um, on Sunday, this last week, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Morales blasted the CEO for obstruction of Brazilian justice, in incitement of a crime, waging a disinformation campaign, um, and that he was going to open up an investigation of Musk himself. If you've seen a photo of this judge, he looks really spooky. I mean, he really looks like a, 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 a dictator in the making. Um, anyway, back and forth. It's going to be interesting. Uh, of course, in, in this kind of issue, I'm 100% behind uh, Musk. I hope he finds a way, uh, he finds a way to, uh, uh, you know, at least uh, he's bringing the issue to, to the attention of the world, the extent to which Morales is a little dictator and to the extent to which Brazil's uh, freedom of speech is really, really, really under threat. Uh, again, Morales, to some other examples, uh, you know, uh, uh, he, 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 it's, it's not only uh, uh, what you'd call the, the so-called far right, whatever, the hell, whatever that means in this context, but he's also ordered 10 members of Congress to be completely silenced on the Internet. These are members of Congress. They haven't been found guilty of any crime. He's forced Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and every other social media to remove them, even though... There's been no, there's been no court. They, 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 they haven't been uh, judged. Um, they haven't, as far as we know, violated the terms of service of any of these. This is just by fiat. Uh, you know, the, the Brazilian authorities are demanding that these companies, that these countries uh, deplatform them. Um, of course, Twitter has a mixed record here. It has deplatformed people at the request of the Turkish government, at the request of the Indian government. So they have been accounts banned. I, I don't know exactly why this is the battle Elon Musk is waging, why he's picked this and not with the others. Maybe he feels like he's in a stronger position here. I don't know. But um, good for Musk. Uh, let's hope uh, he succeeds. Uh, let's hope that this creates a real backlash within Brazil against the Lula regime and against these horrible, um, this horrible judge. Uh, I, I'm not sure when the next election is. I think it's in 2026. And I'm not sure who the opposition is going to put up. But hopefully it's, it's somebody who's not named Bolsonaro. And hopefully, hopefully they don't commit the same mistake the Americans are doing by, by um, presenting the alternative to Biden as Trump. Uh, and that they find somebody better. They find somebody more inspiring. They find somebody more committed to freedom, more committed to, 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 to capitalism. Uh, more committed to any level of freedom uh, than, uh, than Bolsonaro or, or Lula. 
So uh, Brazil is a country I really do love. I, 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 yeah, I like the people. You know, uh, I think I've said this in the past, my wife and I love Rio de Janeiro. I think it's one of the most beautiful places on, on planet Earth. It, it's a vibrant, beautiful city. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, I've spent a lot of time in Brazil. I've, I've lectured all over Brazil in, you know, most of the major cities in Brazil. I've either visited or given a talk or both. And, well, I, in order to give a talk, I have to visit. So, yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I have a, and, and again, it's the biggest, certainly most powerful country in Latin America. And uh, I'm, I'm very interested in what happens here. And I think anybody who values freedom should be. Uh, I have a lot of friends in Brazil, uh, objectivism. Uh, there's a very active objectivist pro-free market uh, movement in Brazil. So there are lots of reasons uh, uh, to uh, root for Elon Musk in this particular challenge. Elon, um, two days ago, tweeted, how did uh, Alexander de Morales become the dictator of Brazil? He has Lula on a leash. Well, does he have Lula on a leash, or is he just doing Lula's bidding? I mean, Lula is an, a, a, ultimately a, a, a dictator um, and, uh, or has a dictator tendencies, and um, so uh, I'm not sure who has whom on a leash. But it, it is interesting to, it, it, it will be interesting to see what Morales' ambitions are. Uh, another thing that's interesting is that a magazine like Wired, I've talked about this in the past, Wired, which used to be a tech magazine, very invested in technology, venture capital, Silicon Valley, very pro-tech, has become over the last, I don't know, five years or, or more, just a leftist rag, just a, just a, a, a place that everything is tilted, tilted, um, it, it, it tilted towards uh, the leftist agenda. Uh, Wired, uh, Wired's headline is, Elon Musk is platforming far-right activists in Brazil defying court order. So uh, by Wired's uh, definition, Elon Musk is the bad guy uh, because he is standing up to a authoritarian uh, courts in uh, in Brazil that um, is is uh, clearly violating Brazilians' free speech. And again, I, uh, Brazilians are afraid. I, I mean, I talked to Brazilians. I uh, I, I, I met uh, Brazilians at uh, uh, at our conference in uh, Buenos Aires. I, of course, was in São Paulo a week ago. Uh, and uh, Brazilians are afraid. Brazilians are worried.